morning. Maybe today we'll have two combines running them beans. But first, we probably ought to take the other header to the field. Dad and BJ are finishing up Dad's cutter bar. Jeff is going to meet us over there at the old bins. I'm going to give him a lesson on how to dump trucks over there. And yeah, hopefully things go better today. By better, I mean hopefully we get more acres done. We'll see. The day's young. So this is Friday, September 22nd. Right now as it stands, we've done about 150 acres of corn and 40 acres of beans so i know people always kind of want to know uh you know what we've got done where we haven't hauled anything to the bins we really haven't got near as much done as we could in a week because uh well we were hauling to the ethanol plant we were quitting every day at four and really we could only get a few loads a day but those times are behind us now and beans should go pretty quick depending on uh, if we have any breakdowns just got the head over here dad and Jeff are working on the other head. BJ had to run home real quick. So one thing we do have going on today, we have a new Underforth grain cart coming. So if you guys didn't know, we have a working relationship with Underforth. And the red cart that we've been running is their grain cart. They're coming to swap it out um, with another one that looks just like it. So uh, we'll got a couple of different options on it, but uh, that should be here today. If you were at the Farm Science Review, it was sitting on that lot, the red 1319 single auger grain cart. They're twins. It's got a what? You get a joystick like you're playing video games back in the 80s again. You were alive then, weren't you? <laughs> What's that for? Run the spout and the auger. What? No way. Hey, Brett, we'll even send you with the bird nest. So when our fent gets here, we'll be switching tractors, but it ain't here today. Probably won't be here till Monday, be my guess. So Challenger's gonna pull the new cart for a day or two. It's going to its new home. Been a good cart. We've had that one two full seasons. We we're starting the third with it. So we are firing up the new cart for the first time. Like I say, it's the same model, but there's a few options that are different. I'm sure BJ will go over those, but one of the main ones that's different is that joystick. That's going to be different for us. We've never had a joystick. We had to wire that up, and uh, basically our hydraulic layout is going to be a little different. Really, other than the jack, there's only one other hydraulic. You basically stick it in constant, and then everything's controlled through that joystick. So that should be pretty cool. In my opinion, that's kind of going to eliminate the desire for us to ever want a right-hand dump cart. What I mean by that is the auger being on this side. Some people like that because all your hydraulic controls are on the same side as a right-handed dumping cart. My problem is, pretty good chance that one of us is going to hit it with a combine auger. That's my thought, but hey, each their own. This, I believe, will work better for our system. Jeff, huh? you ever had a wag bar? I have not, but I'm about to. Yep, and if you like them, you can use the link in the description to get yourself 10% off on your first order. Jeff just got the crash course on uh, dumping trucks over here. We still got to go change the gleaner over. Dad is uh, chomping at the bit to get started. The grain cart is now 
fully ready to go. Everything's working on it. One thing I don't know is how accurate these scales are right now. They've never been calibrated by us. So I don't know what we're gonna do there. I'd really like to take a load, first load in town off those if we can. Let's have to see. Multitasking. Changing a cob by never one hand, talking on the phone. Alright, over to the header wagon we go. We've got to get hooked up to the head and then we've got to do a header calibration and check a couple things. And then we'll be good to go. Dad's already going. I think he's having some trouble with his auto stuff. Alright, time to get her hooked up. First thing we do. I always make sure the head is on. What I mean by that is, if the head won't latch, the head ain't on. Now I hook the PTO up. I'm about to set you guys down for that one. Now we get the single point. This is a single point hookup. Unlike that crank part, there's only one hydraulic connector on this machine. Now, you may be wondering why don't tractors do that? Because this only pulls, this only hooks up to two implements, the corn head and the draper head, and they both have a specific design single point hookup for this machine. Tractors pull all sorts of stuff. Now you can get a single point hookup, I believe, uh, who is it? I've seen it before, I can't remember which company makes one, kind of pricey, and you'd have to have one for each implement you own. Ready to check. Our timing. This is how we make sure the head's still in time. I go over to the other side, make sure we're on E there. If not, this side of the head, they both drive from each side. This side will be shaking the crap out of the. This will be out of time. You don't want that. It's not good. It's not, not good. Parts are off the clock. Trending. Now see, now our timing's a little off. So I gotta try to turn this freaking thing. Now we got it. Must have a good PCL on there. So here we are calibrating our header. So basically I do the things it tells me to do, hit calibrate, and then the combine has control of the head. It's basically learning the weights. Like we need this much hydraulic pressure to get this thing lifted up this high. This is how your presets work drag rods need to unhook them things I forgot about that afternoon folks yeah new toy got a brand new under for 1319 if you were at the farm science review in London Ohio you may have seen this machine Sitting on the lot. Open up a dirty window and get you a clean look. So a lot of you may say, well, hey, that looks just like the Amber 1319 cart that you guys used to run. And for in a lot of ways, you would be correct. It does look very similar. Couple main differences though. Um, the niftiest being this guy. Hand remote runs everything on the cart, although right now it doesn't. So you have to have this link through one hydraulic remote, which I have here. And when I activate said remote, which I just didn't do because I didn't save a setting, which I just did, now look at Mr. Spout. And guess what? Okay. It's not working. All right, I'm gonna have to do some working. Maybe we pop the line off. That's probably gonna be my guess. Probably pop the hydraulic line out. We'll take a look. All right, take two. So, yes, with the hydraulic line disconnected, but this machine is controlled by a joystick and that requires an electrical plug-in. Electric connection comes dis disconnected, so we have to get out and fix that. But now for a demonstration. Engage one hydraulic remote, and that allows me 
unfold, fold, change directions of the spout, and open and close the flow gate back there, all from this joystick. It's pretty handy. Only one set of hydraulic lines to worry about. We have a hydraulic jack, which is hooked up, but I've got it locked out right now. I don't want to jack the cart up while I'm in the field. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see down there. We'll take a look at that when we get out of the cab. Uh, there also is an electric roll tarp on this cart. Do not currently have it wired up for the Challenger because when the fantastic Fent re returns to the farm, say that three times fast, when it gets back, we're gonna put the cart on the Fent and I will wire everything up to the Fent at that point. But uh, I think that pretty well covers this year's 1319. And I'm sure you guys will get plenty more action shots and video of it as the harvest season progresses. So while I don't know how accurate our yield monitor is, I do believe that our moisture counter is accurate. 8% September 22nd. Wow. All right, we're done with the first field. Dad's fueling up his combine. He was a little shorter on fuel than he thought. I'm going to hop across the road and we're going to start on this 44 acre. Yeah, we got a rock right there. Can't have that. Please don't have a broke section. Good, good. We'll give this back to the railroad. My gift to them. So I'm doing a calibration load now that the grain cart seals are calibrated. We went and weighed a load that uh, we did from that last field that was dumped on that cart. That cart was 3,000 pounds off, so that was a good idea. 3,000 pounds doesn't seem like a lot, but out of 60, you know, I mean, that's a decent percentage. It won't be as accurate as possible. For a couple hundred pounds off, so be it. 3,000 pounds, a little bit more than we want to be off. Uh, BJ's follow me. I'm just about completely full, and we will weigh and calibrate and go from there. The combine is saying that we weighed off 18,000 pounds. We'll see what the cart says. Hopefully we're low. Otherwise these beans are not very good. Alrighty, that's better. Uh, did I do that right? We were 2,000 pounds off. So Mrs. Brown just pulled in. We are heading to our house. She's picking me up. Supposed to meet a guy there to measure out kitchen cabinets. So he can only do it today. Want to stop the combine? Dad's gonna keep on running, and I'm gonna go measure some kitchen cabinets for about 20 minutes, and then we'll be back. She's jeeping today, so we should be good and dusty. This bolt came out. Huh? That bolt came out. Bolt that's bolt. Not where a bolt comes. Oh, that's okay. Watch out. Holy cow! Okay. Run out of gas. What are you talking about? Talking about how I found the Jeep running in the barn, just running. Yeah, I might have uh, started it this morning while I was getting fuel. Because I thought the battery would be dead. So it ran for nine hours. Didn't even burn an eighth of a tank. Bye. It was fun. It was real, but not real fun. Bye, yeah, yeah. Bye, kids. That's the last of this 44 acres. And we got an 88 acre field just right over the hill that we can get to without unhooking the heads. So that's where we're gonna head. Head two, I should say. So that field we just came from made 41 bushels per acre. That's some very droughty soil. This field's planted the same day, same bean been anywhere from mid 60s to low 70s. Heavier ground, we're a little bit lower in the tiers, like up there's gravel, heavier ground, and then it drops down in another bottom, it's real heavy ground. So, makes me feel better. Maybe we won't be, you know, completely harvesting, harvesting complete terrible beans all the time. Put that in perspective, our double crops made 50 last year, so 
That was probably the worst first crop field I've harvested in several years. See where the trees are? Because I can't. Stand by for carnage. Just slide over to the middle of the first sprayer track. That should put us right at the edge of those beans on the next when we turn around. Because I can't see anything over there. I don't feel like total on the head uh, because of dust. It's very dusty. And going into that sun, it's just, I, I can't see anything over there. All right, now that we got the gleaner emptied out, let's turn it around and see what Dad's into over here. Yeah, with some fuel temperature issues, Lexion. Brought the truck down a couple of things out. Looks like he's moving on to something else. Just replaced all the sections on the on the cutter bar last night and this morning, so he's checking what came loose or what. Well, right as we get here, he backs the truck out of the field, so I guess we'll never know. One thing about it, it's been dusty enough. I'm sure there was plenty of chaff up in there. Somewhere over there is Dad. So this field, part of the reason why it's yielding better is it's better ground, a little heavier ground, less gravel. One thing that could also be helping that, I do remember putting lime on this field a year ago. Here, this will be the second season since that application. That lime should be helping that crop. Basically, lime keeps the pH closer to seven. If you have a low pH, it will raise the pH. So you want the pH closer to seven because basically if it's far away from seven, the crop is just unable to take up nutrients. So uh, that could be helping us some. You've been wondering how dry it is. That's a pretty good indication right there. 8.7% moisture, 8.6. No more rain than we've had, or actually pretty decent beans, I think, about 55 bushel, maybe 60. 60 if keep our fingers crossed. Dad's overheat issues apparently solved. Just some dirt, dust, build up around the filters. Somewhere in there is a silver gleaner. Brian's running. When it's this dry and this dusty, sometimes you don't know whether you're looking at dust or smoke. And you really hope it's not smoke, but it's hard to tell the difference sometimes. So this is the last pass. All the trucks are loaded. I'm gonna have enough to finish off the cart. And uh, then we'll be back out here tomorrow. So it is good to have both machines going. We didn't really get going good until about three o'clock, what with uh, hooking up the new cart, training Jeff on dumping, switching combines over, rebuilding the cutter bar. But between three o'clock and it's almost eight o'clock, we did 150 acres today, so things are moving. That's good. But there's not a whole lot of other fields that are ready, as far as beans, that, this ready. Uh, within a week, they'll all be ready, so I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna keep on the beans after we finish this. This is a 90 acre field. We're a little over half done with it. I don't know if we're gonna keep on beans or switch back to corn or, or what we're gonna do yet. Rest assured, you guys will know about the same time I know. We change our mind a lot. Now some of that is because all three of us probably have some undiagnosed ADHD, like, oh look, a squirrel. But some of it is just dependent on the scenario. I mean, if it would, was to rain, which it never does anymore, but if it did rain, that would immediately switch us to corn because beans, they pick up a lot of moisture. So if it rained tonight, like a few tents, we could run corn tomorrow. We wouldn't be running beans. So weather dependent, I mean, there's, there's variables that could affect what crop we end up harvesting. But uh, I would say we'll probably stay on beans while we can, though. We typically try to get all the wheat acres done early. That way we can get the wheat crop out as early as possible. Uh, I think we're putting out about 380 acres of wheat. Um, once we get done here on this farm, that'll be 210 total acres of the wheat crop that will be ready for planting. So we are doing another calibration load. Just want to double check. So we are dumping sitting still. Um, once again, we'll get the weight that BJ tells me off the scales. I'll put it in there and uh, we'll see where we're at. Now that cart has automatic tarp, which is cool, but we don't have it hooked up just because that ain't the tractor it's gonna be pulled with the rest of the season. So BJ will be putting that in the shed tonight. Otherwise we'd probably just leave it down here. 
we are going to leave both combines down here tonight. We were off a little bit. We were off uh, almost uh, 1,500 pounds. So one of the reasons we need that to be accurate, we make um, management decisions based off our yield maps. So uh, those decisions are only going to be as good as our accuracy. Now sometimes there will just be circumstances that we can't be accurate, but when we can keep it accurate, we try to keep our yield maps as accurate as possible. Look at this, we're getting our windows clean. Man, even getting the mirrors, probably could use some water, not really doing much. Just helps a little bit though. The mirrors get so dirty, you can't even use them. Everybody, thanks for watching. If you would, do us a favor. Thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. Drop us a comment and we'll see you in the next one.